Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons, terrorize! Hi, and welcome to TFYLP. Uh, this is actually a pre-record, uh, so we're not exactly sure when this is going to go up, uh, but we are just doing this to, in order to, you know, have, um, additional episodes that are timeless, uh, so that, uh, you know, when we need to take a break or take a weekend off or whatnot, uh, that, uh, that we have it. So, so anyway, so joining me today, uh, I have Anna. Hello. We got Paul. Hi. And Jack. Hola. I was trying to think of something corny, but I couldn't think of anything in time. That's your, that's your tagline, man. Hola. <laughs> so you just kind of growled? Whoa. That's the tagline? Spanish growl. Oh, was it? Hola. <laughs> so, hola. Um, so this week is actually kind of has stemmed from uh, a debate that... I've been having with Anna for a while now uh, with the uh, the recent Transformers comics, uh, but it's kind of just overall uh, about you know what we like with uh, Transformers media and whatnot. Uh, but uh, but the actual topic is um, do tr does Transformers media need to be violent? Do there need to be deaths in Transformers? Um, I guess Anna, what what else are we? encapsulating the topic i mean i think that's basically the that's the general idea is that i want to talk about just the role of violence and killing and very violent killing in transformers media and how that's like kind of become a part of a lot of the forms of media in transformers and how people some of the more I don't know, traditional fans seem to have a pretty negative reaction to a version of the media that lacks this kind of like high octane killing violence type stuff. Um, and I don't just mean like, you know, favors explosions, but I mean, you know, the dismemberments that started in the old comics back in the day. Um, it's been around a long time. So it's just kind of a, a topic of can we remove the heavy, somewhat grotesque violence from Transformers media and still have, you know, the big fans like it? Or, you know, do we have to have it? And also, have there been successful stories in Transformers that, you know, have been the entire story without a nice beheading or mm -hmm. bifurcation or other interesting death scene? Well, you know, I think just historically with Transformers, uh, you know, kind of the the first deaths, I guess I would say, uh, would have to be the Transformers movie uh, that came out. So, I mean, and I think that the, because uh, I think season one and two, were there any deaths in that, I think? I'm actually about to look it up right now. <laughs> And so well, I, well, let's see. I, I feel like that that was just like a shocking thing that happened at the time because like I, b I believe at the you know prior to that a lot of especially children's you know this is a children's property and children's media and whatnot you you know no one actually died like it was like there was lots of violence there was uh, you know shooting back and forth and whatnot <coughs> but everybody came back the next week or you know repaired themselves whatever and you know, this movie comes out and I mean, I, I feel like it was kind of a shocking thing for a lot of people's childhoods. I mean, you talk about this was like a traumatic event for all of these children that go to the movies and we're expecting to see Optimus Prime, like, you know, up on the big screen and all these other characters. And then like in the first third of the movie or whatever, it, it's like all these guys just get, sh you know, shot and killed and whatnot. And you see Prime <laughs> die. I mean, I, I just can't even imagine 
you know what what it was like for for so many kids. Do you? I mean, were you were you just not there, Lucas? No, <laughs> were you not I, I no, I was. I I just I don't know. I don't remember it being necessarily that traumatic for me. Like I think that I I was bummed that they were gone, but I don't think it was something. I don't remember being being traumatized I, by it. I vividly remember it. Um, and I've, I don't know, everyone loves to wax poetic about this exact sort of thing. I'll try to keep it to a minimum, but like, I do remember going to see, I, I kind of knew Optimus was going to die because if you saw the commercials, if you even look at old commercials for the movie, <laughs> they show him getting blasted in the face and they're like, does prime die? That's like literally oh, what yeah. they said yep. in the commercial. It's like, oh shit, he's going to die. Like obviously, or they wouldn't say that. Um, so I went to go see it and I kind of remember it being like my first or second movie ever. And that moment when Prowl gets shot and the laser doesn't bounce off his ass onto like somewhere else. And he like breathes smoke and turns oh, gray yeah. and falls over. I think I like probably jumped up on my seat and like, if, if I didn't say it out loud, cause my mother was probably next to me. I was probably like, Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead. <laughs> like he's he didn't. This is this. They're playing for keeps this time. Like oh my god! And then like Braun gets it and Ratchet gets it. Um, Ironhide gets pretty much one of the worst ones of it. Yeah, but Just, that one didn't really. I didn't really like the impact of that because it was off screen. Like my young brain didn't really. Yeah. It. Like oh he yeah he just got shot. You know like whatever. <laughs> Not like a blue into a million pieces. So like. I kind of like got excited. Not that I was like a bloodthirsty kid, but I was just like, "Oh shit, the rules changed. This is like serious. This is real <laughs> transform. This is so awesome." And I I just ate it all up. Like I I couldn't it, it, the stakes were raised, I guess. And so I thought it was um it got me more excited for Transformers. I didn't necessarily I mean, I knew they were cartoon characters. I wasn't when Prime died, I wasn't sitting there like crying but i was like dang that i liked that guy like too bad <laughs> too bad yeah i was the same way and when starscream died you know that was just such a cool visual i was just like wow what a cool way to go that's so awesome and you know so so the violence i just kind of i just kind of said okay like here we are we're we're in violence time and that that was okay we're in a new world i think that in the mo- the new movies they definitely leaned into that hard like in a way that i would not recommend they do <laughs> but uh like if, if you're going with comics though anna as like your main topic here i didn't read the marvel ones so i, I know there's a lot of gruesome deaths like i've seen panels of how shockwave dies like this you know they just like snap him out of existence with this chip or something and uh galvatron gets sucked away by like the swarm or something you know there's some gruesome deaths but i think it in the... starts early too it like does. in the story okay well with more than meets the eye and stuff like i really like the way they handled that stuff like i, I thought it i thought it elevated the story beyond um you know making it over overdone because i think robert's kind of you know he doesn't have a heavy hand with a lot of that stuff he knew when to use it to uh, his advantage, in my opinion, and well, Last Man of the Rings is a little bit gluttonous, but you know that was it was like billed as such, right? But it's, it's the records, like that. That's kind of like you know what you're going to get with that. So, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I think that in general, like you want there to be like the deaths, like raise the stakes on a lot of it, but at the same time, you can't have it to where like the world is going to end like, cause then like the stakes are like, like, like there's no stakes once again, because like, you know, the world's not going to end. Like, you know, that like eventually the good guys are going to win or whatever. So if you can actually have it to where it's just like, kind of there's some death, but not, you know, everyone, everyone dying. But, uh, I don't know. And then of course, Robert's like, obviously comic books in general, like, I mean, there, there's a zillion comic book deaths and everybody always comes back like, you know, no matter what. And so, um, I mean, there's a few characters in more than meets the eye that never came back, but a lot of them did like, they found a way to, you know, kind of cr- create something to where they would, you know, some type of 
storytelling thing or whatever to where to where they would come back. But like, I mean, I think again, like you look at like uh, Overlord in the in the comics in both the Wreckers and in More Than Meets the Eye. I mean, it was just such a huge character. And I don't think that he would quite have the same impact if it wasn't for the fact that the dude just like just crushed everybody that got in his way. I right, and it's agree. it's a very mm-hmm. common storytelling element in Transformers stuff. Like it's just it feels like basically like Paul said, since the rules changed in the eighty six movie, it's just been that death is going to be this like big piece because it's like as much as part of the reason for this topic is me trying to defend some of the less violent plots in transformers fiction i often say that my favorite transformer story is beast wars and if you're a participant in the beast wars your percentage of still being alive at the end of it is pretty low not that many (laughs) characters really survived that show (laughs) It was honestly used as a, it was used as a storytelling tool quite frequently in that series. Um, now, I don't call it a storytelling tool in the new movies, the the Bayverse movies. That's not a storytelling tool. It's just it dies. There's a lot of like it dies. Its life didn't have any meaning. Moving on to the next scene. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said it's like. It's pushing. It, they lean into it way too hard. Like they just, right. they just act. They like throw it around like confetti. Like death, death, death. Face ripping. <laughs> that's you know that's Michael Bay. Give me your face. Right. And right. If you if you humanize characters too much, like I've often when people tell me that the Bayverse Transformers movies are not grotesquely violent, I ask them to imagine all of the kill scenes with people <laughs> instead of robots. <laughs> And they're like, right. it's like oh. a hardcore horror movie looking as soon as you start thinking about face repades and spine repades and all of that on actual humans. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and I think what Transformers, I mean, part of it is, and, and part of the reason they did it in the beginning is because they wanted to introduce additional toys, like new toys. Right. And how do you do that? How yeah, do you... How do you introduce more characters without it getting too cluttered? You know, because there's what? I mean, I don't even know how many hundreds of Transformers characters there are in general. Um, but Can't they just know. send them on vacation once in a while? Back to Cybertron? <laughs> yeah. right. Send them on a mission to some other galaxy like Captain Marvel and bring them back sometime later. Oh. You know, in defense of the... Of the uh, the Mortal Kombat that see, apparently happens with Transformers all the time. You know, I think it's kind of natural that it happens because they're essentially immortal beings. So, if they, you know, the, the war has gone on for millions of years, it's, which is such a ridiculous concept to begin with, but Horrible. it's because, yeah, it's just, like, did they have to be, can we condense it to, like, maybe a thousand, like, or something? But, uh, you know, they're, they're essentially immortal beings because they... You know, they can always rebuild themselves. They're mechanical. They're like a sentient bio, uh, biomechanical race, um, which is a science, you know, science fiction trope. But when you when you basically can't die by regular means, like I guess you know the next, the, it's very significant when someone actually dies. Yeah. Right, which is the whole. That's the whole building to the new comic, right, is the significance of death. Like, that was the thing they build it with, which was just like, you know, there is a death, and we're going to spend a lot of time exploring the effects of this death and the social effects and the psychological effects and all that stuff instead of, you know, just constant action peppered with at least a death every two issues. And it's a different approach, and I've noticed that people are not really, people are not reacting warmly to it, at least the people I'm hearing, which is fun because that's another thing, like, I don't really think this topic lends itself entirely to it, but I really am asking myself whether or not the new comic actually has a fan base, 
because I don't hear stories about IDW going into crisis control or anything because it's doing bad. I don't hear that it's selling bad or anything. So I'm assuming it has a fan base still, even though the people who I know, like Lucas, who was really into the old comics, has turned on it pretty strongly. Well, I mean, I think it's just it's just too slow. I mean, the thing is, is that like in the old comic, there wasn't deaths every two issues. That there was, I mean, they had strategic deaths that may happen every, I don't know, whatever, every six issues or something like that. I mean, there was quite a few that would just go go on, and then a lot of, especially robots in disguise. Uh, you know, when it started, like there wasn't a lot of deaths. I mean, it was really more dealing with what what is it like to deal with the world after the war is over, um, you know, too. So I, I think then on, on both of them, it, you know, it's kind of dealing with these interesting concepts. Um, I think that, you know, the new, the new comic, I guess, I, ironically enough, is kind of like built on investigating someone's death, uh, at least the very, the first few issues and whatnot. So... Um, I mean, there's still death in, in the new comics. It's just, I, I don't necessarily know that it has to be violence or death that you have to, like, bring into it. But, I mean, I think there's other storytelling elements. Um, I, but I think that the the biggest thing is, is that, um, you know, more than me, CI and, like, a, you know, G1 and all these other Beast Wars and whatever, is the fact that they made us really connect to these characters. And so then their deaths really meant something when they died. I don't feel like that way mm. in Beast War, or I'm, I'm sorry, in um, in the movies. Like, in the movies, it's like, I, I don't really care that much about most of the characters, uh, except for, you know, maybe Optimus and, you know, whatever, but... Um, so, I mean, I don't know. I think that there's a good a good mix, like, even though, you know, characters are dying, you know, throughout the media. Are there any good examples of stories or arcs within Transformers? And I don't want to limit it to just, because I know Lucas will probably pull out, a, pull out a few examples from Robots in Disguise, but I mean across the franchise, across everything, are there good examples of stories that were told without death? Like basically, you know, where the central storytelling element wasn't death, but it was something else. And it was still well liked. Other than the G1 cartoon, because the G1 cartoon just didn't have death. Um, I mean, it's kind of a cop out, but like, <laughs> isn't Rescue Bots like a pretty yeah. well liked story but that's that? Yeah. Right. In, yeah, yeah. You know, it's what I was hardly, kind of thinking of. I mean, they kind of take out most of the conflict. The, there's not a lot of war going yeah. on in that. I mean, that's another, other than being immortal beings, like, the quintessential story is there's a war going on. So, like, you know, what do you do in war? You try to obliterate the other side. So there's going to be a lot of death. But in Rescue Bots, they kind of, you know, take get rid of that part. And it's more like we're problem-solving robots. <laughs> we are, yeah. uh, you know, coming up with battle plans. We are fighters. Yeah. That's, that's my easiest answer, I guess, right off the bat. But I'm sure there's better ones, better answers. I have a good answer, though, because it also pulls in, like, that is the kid show. That is, like, the quintessential Transformers kid show. It's been running for almost 10 years now, yeah, and it feels crazy. like, it doesn't feel like people, you know, start watching it when they're toddlers and then just keep watching it. It feels like they kind of cycle out, right? And we talked yeah. um, a few shows ago about... Um, how that's probably like part of the intention is to have like the little kids show, the medium kids show, and then the adult collectibles that may not need a show to keep going. But um, I feel like it's successful though. Like it works, but it is like filling in that gap of it's the kids show and then everything else is going to have that like violence aspect to it. Like even I've been hearing the even Cyberverse kind of, is going more towards a heavier death um, theme as the show goes on. Well, that, I haven't that, watched that, past that, the first season, but... Have, have you at least seen that episode where Megatron beats the crap out of Starscream? It's, like, no, super I violent. Like, I was like, I was almost, like, I was kind of cringing when I watched it because I was like, this is supposed to be for kids, and they're, like, really, really 
beating the crap out of each other here. Like it just oh, felt. No. I felt bad. Is that reversed? <laughs> yeah, it's like the second episode of the new season, and then he kills him. He's dead. He, he like it throws him out the door. Spoiler alert! He's yeah. Spoiler. Yeah, I was gonna say we better put a spoiler yeah, alert. Oh, it's episode two. Up. Come on, it's epi- season three is coming out. <laughs> I got no patience for that. Maybe he's <laughs> trying to catch up. Yeah, oh. I was gonna say I I still need to catch up because it's like it, again the cyberverse. Like I don't know what you think about it, but. Like, I've, I've wanted to try and watch it with my kids, and they kind of, like, watch an episode or two, and they're like, all right, I'm done. Like, can you put Pokemon back on, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I think a year-old episode uh, of a 15-minute t- TV show, like, that's not a spoiler, sorry. It's fine, it's fine. Yes. I, I, I want to get back to that in a second, though, because I okay. feel like I feel like a bunch of people that I know have said that that episode, that arc... That Starscream death was the turning point of the series where they hmm. started liking it, which there I think go. is very evident of this whole thing we're talking about. But yeah. I was hoping, do you have any other examples of nonviolent plots we actually liked in Transformers? Uh, I don't know. I Rescue Bots Academy? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um... Again, past G1, because G1 had a lot of more... Well, I mean, like, what counts here? Like, a single episode, or, like, a whole story arc, or the whole story. Yeah, a story that's not taught around the concept of a death, or deaths, or something like that. Mm. Mm. I enjoy that we're having trouble finding examples at all. (laughs) I (laughs) don't have to think. I mean, I think, ultimately... There's always going to be a death, like, because I mean that's kind of like how you, like, again, once once that G one movie hit, I mean, it, like, I almost feel like ultimately, like, that's how you stop the guys on the other side is by killing them. It's like, you know, I, I don't know, uh, the Bumblebee I, movie like does, has a couple still, and I mean it doesn't have a ton of it, jumper. but oh yeah, I guess. Uh, I kind of thought of one, but I'm not quite sure. Everybody's favorite kiss players. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. That's an example. It might be, but I mean, I don't read, you know, that stuff, but actually, you you might be, you might be onto something because I don't, I don't know if there is a lot of like death in that story, but I don't know this. I don't know the source material. I know, that's what I'm saying. I'm looking at... Oddly enough, TF Wiki has a whole page just on death in the Transformers. Yeah, and, there and is I think that makes a ton. point. There is a crap ton. And luckily I don't see anything for Kiss players, so I'm just going off that. I don't think that's a major theme. I have only read synopsises of Kiss players. I've never read the source material. I mean, there's definitely violence in it. Yeah. Um, but there's more like comedy, and I know like every, Kiss players gets a really bad rap, but there is a story there, and there's definitely some gross stuff going on. But it's all kind of meant in like this twisted humor sense, more so than like hentai sense <laughs> if i'm gonna if that's as far as i'm gonna go with it but you have Please. to look past you have to be able to look past like the tongues and all that stuff to get there and most people aren't willing to do that <laughs> it's a difficult thing to yeah, like. that's like that's like the only one i can't think of that you know actually has well no you know, death in it the 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 funny thing is i mean because in general like for any story you have to have conflict, right? Like, I mean, that's just, like, yeah. part of it. So you're going to at least... Right. You're either going to have violence or you're going to have conflict due to relationships, right? And so, you know, most of the Transformers media going through, there really hasn't been a lot of... Like, there's there's been a few relationships, but it's not been, like, a big part of the storyline. I think, again, getting back to more than meets the eye, that's, like, one of the first thing you know books where you really I, I really feel like it was kind of more on um you know relationships 
than it was necessarily like the deaths themselves. And so I think that there's plenty of story arcs within more than BCI to where it wasn't violent, like where, you know, where they would have to, um, you know, they'd have, have certain things where they'd have to save different bots and whatnot. Um, but it didn't necessarily like end in a death. Yeah, there's at least some examples. Yeah, I mean, more than meets the eye had some gruesome stuff in it, but for one of the first times, it didn't need it. It it, it like that wasn't the core of the story. The, the meat and potatoes of it was like relationships. It it didn't treat them just like stupid robots. Right. It treated them like characters and like human beings essentially. You know, there were yeah, there like was people. love. Yeah, they had emotional damage and conflicts that they were all dealing with and you know lying and like self-actualization that you know typically we're not worried about with optimus prime he just always has the answer you know so that's all we need to think about but all those leaders and um they were flawed everyone was a flawed character it was like shakespearean in a way so there was more to talk about than just beating the crap out of robots but when it did happen it was awesome (laughs) Uh yeah i just i i just asked my question if it would have been if because i kind of like i don't know i've heard um i've heard more than means the eye build as being like kind of like um transformers meets star trek type of thing where they're going on you know the space adventure and visiting other cultures Mm. and whatnot and i think what i've read of it fits that pretty well but what if the actual, you know, character death count was more similar to a Star Trek series where it's like, you know, across multiple seasons, it's just a few instead of the more Transformers side. So what if there had been less death action and killing and it had really just been focused? How how far did you get in more than meets the CI? Just out of curiosity, because I, I mean, I know. Nice. Originally, yeah, because, I mean, I feel like that after, you know, the first, I don't know, dozen issues, 16, whatever, I I don't feel like that there was as much death, like, through most of it. I feel like that most of it, they, you know, they kind of had different points. Uh, You know, they had the crossover, the dark Cybertron and stuff like that. But then, like, I'm just trying to think of, like, what they, how many deaths that they actually had where it was, like, you know, it was, like, a huge part of the story. Yeah, and I'm, I, I don't need a body count or anything. It's just kind of a, I don't know. I just think it's unique because, to be honest, like me walking into this conversation, most of the other media I read or watch isn't very violent, right? Like, I mean, for one, half of my reading is academic papers instead of, like, fun things. So there isn't much <laughs> killing. It's, like, research for ethical reasons. But you know other things I read, that that would be a problem if your if your academic papers were focused right? on killing like <laughs> full of killing <laughs> robot killing yes it would be very interesting um but like a lot of the other things I read are like you know manga and um, TV shows and stuff that aren't based around you know violence and death and killing and, and my husband watches a lot of like police procedurals that are based around that killing thing but I think for me it just stands out that every Transformer story I try to enjoy tends to be so violent and honestly I want to learn about the culture like I find this whole idea of crazy long li- long lived there's a better word for that robot people babies with crazy longevity to just be fascinating because what do you do with a multi-million year lifespan and i actually found people complaining about some episodes that i actually find like kind of useful in media like i heard someone complaining that there's a whole episode in cyberverse about a sport that they play and about silly antics on the sport. And while it wasn't the best episode of the series, I liked it because it was world building. It was just like, here's something they do for fun. And no one has to die in this episode, but we can just, you know, talk about this goofy, whatever they call it. 
um, sport. Just like and I yeah, love playing basketball stuff. back in G1. It was basically basketball. <laughs> I mean, I think in general, Robots in Disguise, the, um, the cartoon show... I don't think that had a lot of violence in it. I think if they did, it was really more kind of capturing the bad guy. At least, like at least, I don't know. I, I I mainly watched season one and whatnot. I I don't know if the later seasons were more violent. Oh, but twenty fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the twenty fifteen that show. Yeah, not the the two thousand ish show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. The, say, yeah. The newer. Remember that one was. The newer, oh, the newer cartoon, uh, yep. that one where they had like a monster of the week kind of thing. Because I feel like they ultimately most of them they didn't end up killing them. I'm trying to think of some like G1 episodes that had conflict but weren't centered around violence. And if I remember correctly, some of these were some of the more interesting episodes. Like the girl who loved Power Glide stands out, but there was, I mean, there was. They had that floating base in the sky. There was some like, you know, there was some shots fired in that episode. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But uh, the other one that really stands out is the the one where Rumble turns into a tree, and it, and and sea spray turns into a merman or something. You know, like oh, those. Uh, I, I know you know, it was the episode where, where sea, the only episode with sea spray where he actually did anything. It was his episode. <laughs> Like the conflict there wasn't violence; it was more like relationship based, you know. And it and it gave a different spin on, you know, it was like robot. It, it was almost like the robot um, conflict with a person, you know. And they they like wanted to be wanted to have some sort of friendly relationship, but like it's difficult, you know. <laughs> Not everyone can be Spike sea and Bumblebee. Change. Yeah, sea That's change. One. That was weird. That one was so weird. You know, like when they had something interesting, like like something that wasn't normal. It wasn't just a, a battle base thing. You know, they had there are episodes like that out there. Yeah, and a, I like that weird stuff. Me too. That is more world building and culture building. I mean, does the violence that you're the reason you brought up this topic is it like off putting or is it just like interesting to you that this is a fandom? This is something you're interested in that is different than everything else you're interested in. Pretty much. It's pretty much that one. And that and me trying to figure out why people have such a negative reaction to the slower storytelling of the comic as well. Like that's the main difference I see between, you know, the current comic and the old comics is the pace of the action and the numbers of gross violence and death and those sorts of things are the big differences to me. Because otherwise it feels very similar to me as someone who hasn't read all of anything. I've just read a little comics here and there throughout my life. Same. Well, the violent stuff, consider it like, you know, a soda tastes really good and it's right here right now. And it doesn't take a lot to enjoy it, but you know, world building is a more complex flavor that, you know, isn't for everybody. Right. That I think requires a deeper level of interest, you know, that you, you see past, you see past the Coca-Cola and suddenly you're like, Hey, you know what? I, I want, I want a Fanta <laughs> I, or I want a coconut water or something. Cause I'm sick of this. Like it's too sweet for me or something. Um, I don't know. That's I enjoy this weird, metaphor. <laughs> weird metaphor, but, uh, I mean, because I think the world the world building is great. And not all the time. Like sometimes I do get bored, but like I loved it in More Than Meets the Eye because it was just that was long form storytelling and it was kind of a new way to do it. Um, I think the movies did a really bad way of it, a really bad example of it because th- there was no long term world building. It was a reset button every movie, which is you know much. Off- offensive to my intellect. I think at that point, so like I'm trying to like this stuff and you're making me feel stupid by not making sense. So like that wasn't great. And I was that that was violence heavy. Well, well, my biggest complaint I think with the movies and like again with the world building is is there really wasn't much of it. Like like none of the action actually takes ca- uh takes place on Cybertron or very little of it in the movies. And so uh like 
it's it's just our world and how do these robots interact with with humans like on our world so i think the thing that i would actually like to see and especially like if they have you know whatever these subsequent movies that are rumored to come out bumblebee 2 and uh the uh beast wars i guess or the the two rumored ones uh that are supposed to be coming out like i want to actually see mm. some action on cybertron or wherever it is you know what i mean to actually build those worlds up and, and kind of give us more of, of that world. Because, again, like, I mean, really, the, the older movies is, is just kind of, you know, how, how do these robots, like, you have, it's like they almost have some stupid human, like, interaction. And, like, to me, like, I felt like that they did a pretty good job, like, in the G1 cartoon, like, with Spike and his dad and all that kind of thing and, like, a lot of the, that thing. That's but, fine. like... Most of the stuff with like, uh, you know, with Wiki and and you know Marky Mark and all that kind of stuff in the movies, I just I just didn't care about any of those guys. I did care about like no, the new Bumblebee been. movie was different because I felt like I actually I, I don't know for whatever reason uh, the uh, Haley Steinfeld or whatever like I, I thought that she was a much better actress. And I actually somewhat connected with her story and and the the parents and, and all that. So I actually didn't mind that one as much as, um, you know, some of those Bay movies. I liked it all except the diving bit. Like, that just didn't work. Like, <laughs> a little too oh, cheesy. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it all worked. It all worked until at the end she dove into the water and so what? <laughs> like so bumblebee just woke up it wasn't because you dove in and like pressed the special button <laughs> well so so for me like i felt like that they were trying to replicate like an 80s movie like one of those like oh, cheesy yeah. ch- you know cheesy 80s movies that they don't make anymore um and so i i felt like that that was kind of like that that diving thing was kind of an homage to to that type of type yeah, of thing so it was super it. it was super cheesy and and all that type of thing but i don't know i, I kind of there, there was just there was no payoff of any kind like it did it didn't need to happen like you could have kept you even could have kept the vhs thing in the garage where she's like diving and her dad's filming like yeah it's good but like there was no payoff it didn't need to happen <laughs> whatever sorry but but to me it's well, a better Haley. than the um like Transformers the last night or whatever like I don't think that the robots needed to be in there like for the most part like if you look at like most of the stuff Marky Mark did most of the like things that progressed the, the work. plot most it's of the work true. and so it's like I would rather it to be like the humans be inconsequential than the robots be inconsequential to a Transformers that's a good movie. point you're making that whole like the whole diving arc and things was to give that character agency was to actually make her a part of the story and not just say like you know cute kid yeah. for bumblebee to protect like i think they were trying to give her her own arc which doesn't appeal as much agreed i guess just from a story it's like chekhov's gun they're like well we gotta fire it in the last season like he really didn't need to like they, she could have just like the whole part with her diving off the the cl- that one right. dude making fun of her for not diving, you know, like that was fine. That all related. I just didn't need the last scene. But um, going back, to, <laughs> going back to what Lucas said, that would be pretty funny because you're right. Marky Mark was important, except he, except Marky Mark didn't kick Galvatron or I guess it was Megatron at this point out of out of that the hole. Show. That that yeah. I was all bum was it Bumblebee or Optimus? Yeah, so at it the ver- at the very end, yeah, like that's robot. what you're talking about, right? Yeah, it was but, so robot a. up until that point, yeah. So you know, another thing that's mentally sick, Optimus. Here we go. That, that's <laughs> going back, going back to the animated film. I mean, I have, I still think that is one of the most violent films of all time. It opens with the genocide of an entire race. It does and pretty then, much, yeah. yeah. Which like really they've no one's ever utilized Unicron in a visual or storytelling perspective as well as that opening two minutes. Because that is like yeah. some mind blowing crap <laughs> when you see all that stuff happen. If you really think about it, it's super scary, it's super violent. Uh you don't really you see the people flying up into the sky. I mean the closest thing I can think of is the black hole sun video by Soundgarden. 
<laughs> which I think was probably <laughs> probably inspired by it's probably a Transformers fan that made that video. Might have been. It's a stretch. Well, yeah, but but I mean that Unicron stuff. You know, he is seeped in extreme violence, like oh, you know, na- natural, um, you know, pulsar black hole level violence that the human race has never experienced. Um, I agree, That's definitely. It. Yeah, I guess it is. I mean, it's hard to find examples of any stories within Transformers. I think it's just like I, I don't know. There's that little bit of like it's hard for me to walk into a Transformers story, especially a comic based story, and attach to any of the characters because I know death is so frequent, and. That just kind of makes me go, like, do I really want to like this person? Because so, so I, I have a question for you. Last? Because I know, like, the media you were you were referring to, right, is, um, which, uh, you know, manga or whatever, right? But if you look at, like, American media, like, if we're talking about, like, ch- like, and even all these different children's properties, but comic books, if you're looking overall, like, at stories with Marvel, DC... Um, if you're looking at He-Man, if you're looking at G.I. Joe, if you're looking at, I'm trying to think of like, you know, Batman, like all these things, like there's like literally, I mean, I think that that's really kind of more the, th- the the question we should be asking is, is boys, boys media properties, right? are filled with violence, like, every single one. There's girls, like, where it's, like, kind of the opposite, where you might have, like, you know, My Little Pony, or, um, um, you know, different things like that, that don't necessarily have the same level of violence, but I feel like boys, like, for whatever reason, it's, like, that that is kind of, like, what everyone thinks that boys need is, or ninjas, like, Power Rangers is another one. I mean, you just go down the line of, like, everything. So, I... I would actually put it out more out as far as if you're looking at uh, American properties that are, you know, geared towards boys, give me another one that's not violent. Like, not Transformers. I I totally get what you're saying. Lego's pretty good for that, yeah. But even then, I mean, the, uh, (laughs) like, the newer... You know, Ninjago and things like that, Chima and whatnot. I mean, that's still still violence in that. I mean, it's not as bad. What, do they break into parts instead of blood and guts, though? Isn't that right? Well, typically. (laughs) Typically. (laughs) But I think that, I think you make a good point. Violence is pretty, all these franchises that make cool toys of robots and whatnot, you know, even... Even my beloved Gundam series, because I, I do really like Gundam, um, has the central tenet of violence. I think I just, I think it's just an interaction of the violence and the character bloat, as you mentioned before, and the need to pump away as you make new characters get rid of the old ones so that they don't bloat things. I think it's that mixture that just makes it harder for me to get into a lot of this fiction because I do feel that, you know, death is only a moment away, whereas at least with a lot of the other series I watch, I can kind of figure out which characters are going to last throughout most of the story and near the end of the story a few people will die or half the cast will die or everyone will die or whatever, but I kind of have this idea of who I can invest in. This is kind of my thoughts towards it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're never supposed, you're not supposed to know who's going to live and die all the time. You know, it's like, it's, yeah, it's Game no, of not Thrones, maybe. It's like, by any means. I, I forgot what show it was, but I remember one. I remember one character was so cocky and so pretty much a dick. I'm like, okay, this guy is going to die, and the other guy who was so nice was going to live, then all of a sudden it's like it gets towards the end, and the guy who was so nice was gone, and then the cocky dude is just, yay, I'm still here! (laughs) Suck it! That was pretty much... (laughs) Like I said, I forgot Um, what show. Pretty sure it was like maybe Energon or or Armada or something, but I'm like, eh. (laughs) Hmm. Yeah. 
Anyway, yeah, that's basically what I wanted to talk about today is just kind of trying to figure out what it is, what it is about this attempt at less violence, violent media. So I just like, I really wonder if when the kill count goes up, because I I do think that eventually in the new comic, it's just going to shift gears and go to, you know, pure war, lots of violence, because I mean, the current toy line is war for Cybertron, so therefore they will need to have more of a focus on war and battle, and they will need to clean out the characters as they bring in more toy people and non-toy people, and they need to clean things out. I just wonder if people are going to turn their... just going to turn entirely and be like, ooh, this is good, because now it's violent and there's lots of kills instead of slower or if that won't be enough or if it'll actually be you know evidence that it was the storytelling the whole time i'm just not sure what do, do i think i i, I think well i, I think uh, if, if you're specifically talking about the the second iteration of the idw story yeah i don't think People are necessarily. I think there's a there's another level to why people are complaining. It's because the story isn't just going anywhere right now. No offense, yeah. Idwa, but I, as far as we know, there's been sort of a production delay with the TV show, and that has caused the comic to stand in a holding pattern, and so they are basically unable to tell the story they were planning to tell. And when they're not in war mode, yeah, they got to keep... They, they, they can't rely on the tried-and-true transform... They can't put the sugar in the recipe. So it seems a little bland to most people. And until they uh, until they get there, until, this, until something happens, I think we're going to be stuck there. And I, I'm not sure it's the lack of violence that's causing the problem. It's just that they don't know where to go. And so they have to get creative. You know, this could be an opportunity for them to do some really cool non-violent storytelling. Um, but... You know, I wouldn't want to be put in that situation if that was my professional job, professional career, be suddenly having to do something different than what you were planning a year ago. So, and and that's the thing I think. Like again, like more than you know. Again, I know we keep bringing up more than me the CI and and Lost Light, but like you do? they pretty much gave Roberts like they're just like here, you you go, you do what you want, right? And like he kind of outside of like the Dark Cybertron stuff where it was crossing over like all of it was pretty much self-contained and he just got the character like they're like here take these crappy characters that we don't care about anyway and make some stories with them whereas and, and so i think the the uh the main book which was like robots in disguise slash i guess they renamed it transformers and then they renamed it optimus prime and whatever um you know that one they had ish, uh problems with it because they had to keep like introducing new characters again where you know that it's like okay it's combiner wars now like we need to throw you know we 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 need that arc like throw throw combiners in there and we need like you know whatever like we need this toy we need that toy blah 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 and so then they had to find ways to insert characters or story points storylines into the book whereas they you know didn't necessarily have to do that for the most part, with with more than meets the eye. Yeah, although I think I like that story better from what I've read, but... Eh. <laughs> but, I mean, I think, again, like, I mean, Barber was a pretty good, you know, storyteller in general, and he could really, you know, he did a good job of connecting all the dots, <clears throat> uh, you know, amongst the, the fiction. And it's hard to say now, you know, obviously they're, they rebooted and they're just restarting, so, I mean, they... They don't have something that they have to be beholden to that, you know, they don't have 10 years of comics that they have to, you know, make sure that it connects and whatnot. Um, And I think that's why I really want to like, I want to like the new story because I walked back into, I walked into a heavier side of this fandom back in 20, late 2016 to early 2017 is when I started really getting into Transformers fandom. Like, I've always collected. I've always liked the toys. And, um, you know, I've been collecting Masterpiece since the first Masterpiece Optimus and all that. 
but I wasn't really like into the fandom. I didn't really have Transformers friends. I had Transformers friend. I had one Transformers friend. So when I made that jump, I meet all these people who are into the IDW comics that have been running for 10 plus years. And it's just like not accessible to me. So I was very excited when there was a reboot. I knew everybody like spontaneously and simultaneously vomited at the idea of a reboot. But I was excited because it was an opportunity to get to read the story actively with my new friends and with this fandom and all that sort of thing. And then it fell flat on everyone but me. <laughs> it was Which like, is not accurate, but it felt that way for a minute. It was like you finally got on MySpace after like 10 years and everyone went to right? Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly I'll see what it was like. Well, you got it. Well, and I'm curious... I feel bad for you. I'm curious, too, because, like, I know the comics, it seems like, you know, they have this main book, but then they're doing a, a lot of miniseries uh, as well. So, like, they have uh, Transformers Galaxies that they're doing. They had the Ghostbusters one. Uh, they are doing, like, a Terminator Transformers. Uh, like, I don't know how many issues that's going to be. If um, And then, what's the... Uh, and then, don't they have another one, like, that Transformers 84, I think... Uh, where they had like a one-off issue and uh, I guess it's going to end up being a, a four-part miniseries as well. So I, I don't know if that's going to be, you know, the new the new norm for Transformers that they're just going to keep pumping out these little miniseries instead of, you know, having multiple ongoing books like they used to or, or what? I would be all for there being like a side series or a mini series that would that could be my nonviolent series that everybody else could have their like main book or whatever that's the usual like action violence so that I get the like world building you know what life what life's like at home on Cybertron on a Thursday. But that would be fiction. all great. Huh? There's always fan fiction. <laughs> There is always fan fiction, and some of it's horrific. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, have you read um, the the one that Margie Scott did? Uh, she did like a thirteen issue till all or one um, a few years ago. Like that might be another one you might check out because that that one was pretty good. I can't remember how much. Like honestly, I just. I, I don't know. I'm I'm like desensitized to all the violence. I don't even remember half of it. I, so. I've heard. I've heard um, I should read that too by some pretty prolific Transformers fans. Are like, you didn't read that? Oh my god! I kind of feel like they <laughs> separated the three books. Like, you get this isn't officially how it is, but like the Megatron book was uh, Lost Light or More Than Meets the Eye, and then Optimus Prime was the Optimus Prime book. Or right. trying to think, it was when it was when, Auto, when Megatron became an Autobot. That's when this like. They had three different stories. Yeah. But then the Till All Are One was essentially the Starscream book. Like, yeah. there was this crazy arc with him, like, becoming, like, his, he wasn't his true self or something. And, and Windblade was there the whole time, too. Yeah. But I've just heard it was a, if it would have been billed as that for me, I totally would have read it. But it, instead, it was, it was more like, this is the Windblade book instead. So I was like, eh, just not for me. But yeah, I think I in read... retrospect, you should read it. From what I've read in random pieces, I have really liked the Windblade Starscream dynamic. It's been a fun dynamic in the older, in those stories. Yeah, it's crazy to think how long Windblade has been a character to basically have multiples of her own arcs at this point. Yeah. Well, the question I have now with Windblade is, is that, is she actually the top female Transformer character? Because... They throw in everything now. You know, she's in most of the comics. And she's been in, like, the, you know, she was in uh, the Cyberverse. I mean, she's a big character in Cyberverse. So has she eclipsed RC as the female Transformer? Well, why do you think RC's always so grumpy all the time for the past <laughs> few years? She's like, yeah, yeah. Like, I got you here. See, I'm, I'm glad for that because... I so recently someone um, on one of the groups on Facebook or boards or whatever shared the bio for the um, Siege RC that's coming out, and it you know 
it listed things like the fact that she's going to be a car and she's going to have a built-in hoverboard for parts for me and all that stuff that people are excited about. But the thing that stood out to me is it described her as a ruthless Autobot warrior, which meant that they're staying with the way that IDW wrote RC, which means that I have no interest in her as a character because I just have not liked that whole, like, you know, if you... If you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons, one approach to playing that game is the murder hobo approach where you just walk in and solve every, you just wander around and you solve every problem with mass killing of everything. And I feel like murder that's been, hobo. I feel like it's been murder hobo RC for years now. That's not my RC I grew up with. So yeah, far, I don't know. See, what see, have that's, you become? That's the funny thing you is, is because like, I, RC? I, uh, <laughs> I loved, like, that arc with R.C., like, her being this, like, crazy assassin, you know, wherever, that you would you would put her in all these situations that other Transformers wouldn't want to go, and it wouldn't matter because, you know, she's got these, like, murder swords that she go in and chop dudes' heads off and whatever. I, I don't know. Like, I I really dig that arc in the in the comics but of you know of course obviously that's built around violence so i guess i right it, it could be good but so far every version of that version of rc and i think it honestly started with the um with the botcon comic spider rc um being more angry violent and super brooding um every version of that type of rc has been a product of extreme trauma and I would rather have an RC that could have a character arc that doesn't involve extreme trauma. So maybe this new version of RC, she'll be just murder crazy without ever having she to go through something you. extremely terrible. It's amazing. Well, yeah, but I feel like every Transformers you. character is, has been a product of extreme trauma. <laughs> you know, no, it's like, them. it's <laughs> uh, at least in the comics. Well, in, in this new comic, I guess Bumblebee gets his turn, but I'm extreme trauma. It's good times. I actually like the new comic. So. Well, anything else we want to add? I know we may be a little bit out of steam. Just, I think we've pretty well established that, like, it's really hard to separate violence from Transformers fiction. Like, really hard. Um, oh, one last question for, I think maybe Lucas has, I know he at least looked at a couple pages, but it's mid February and 2020 right now. So how many, have any of you actually read the Valentine's Day issue? Cause I haven't picked up my copy yet. Um, Did you read it Lucas? No, not yet. I, I haven't had time to. I'm really curious how that's going to go. Just having this like weird out of nowhere romance plot. Oh, they're gonna get there, it there's wrong still, tonight. If you look opposite of that, there's like there's violence there. Violence. So, so there, there so, we go. So don't you worry. So like when I saw that cover, I was like, oh, those must be the generation selects for this year, but they aren't. Are they definitely not? That's so they sad. Are, that's definitely not. It's a shame. I, I, I they might think fight now, but they're gonna get on later. Yeah, I hope I hope that no. they do get a you know that we get a glyph at some point and a tap out. So, well, the fact that they're in a on a cover of a modern current comic seems like why wouldn't yeah like everything everything's supposed to be pretty tied, and like yeah. all those can you can you sh- can you hold that up again because that is oh. probably the Bumblebee toy design, oh. if uh, because everything well, is very sure it was a repaint of the Bumblebee spitting image of the, yeah I wonder if that's what it ends up looking like. Because yeah. all those designs in the comics are like the spitting image of the toys because they're trying to keep it really similar. Right. Yes, he's pretty... He's pretty... No, he's not really one for one. I can't remember. What what does Bumblebee actually look in the comics? I actually don't have the new comic. Odd. Very square. So. He's like the squarest Bumblebee there's ever been. Yeah, I don't know. I know in the, in the old comic, like they would constantly change their their bodies based on like whatever the new toy was, and like they come right. up with some type of storyline to like make it. Oh, hey, I'm you know decided to, decided to take on this new body. So <laughs> honestly, both of those designs, though, neither one have his legs. Hmm. 
They yeah. don't have horse, have horse feet. Well, and that and the cliff jumper is the um, like the windshields at the top. So and like most of those, it was at the bottom. So I don't know if there's right. another another design. Um, True, it's going to be coming out. So or there oh, might yeah. just be no link at all, and they just make them as repaints of them. Oh, I've right? had, I mean, of cliff jumper. I mean, I'm sure that we're going to see additional, you know, smaller smaller transformers. So and everyone can complain. So. I want more gift yeah, sets. I would, I would actually like to see more deluxes of this size if they can be this cool. But if they pack on more accessories, I'm game. Well, the you know the weird thing is is like I actually I, I need to weigh the hoist compared to the cliff jumper to see which one weighs more because like the cliff jumper is like really big, but like there's He's a big. lot of yeah, the there's a lot of so open jealous. space. There. Okay, there's Wesley open, Dixon. There's a lot of. <laughs> There's a lot of open space here, um, you know, for for Hoyce. So I think it works, um, but but yeah. So anyway, all right. Well, um, I guess do we, do we have any other final thoughts on? Uh, I thought it was an interesting topic. I think, yeah. There's. I think we're stuck with violence. <laughs> I mean, yeah, on a, I honestly, like, I would love, and I know this will never happen, but uh, but I would love for them to take and say, hey, you know what, Milne or, jo- or Lawrence or whatever and Roberts, we want you to create a comic with zero violence in it or very little violence or something. <laughs> and I would, I would be 100% on that. And I would, you know, or Collier or any of those guys... Um, I, I would buy it in a heart, in a heartbeat sight unseen, uh, because I, I think that those guys could definitely do it. Um, yeah. but, uh, but, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, again, I think as, um, as Paul said or whatever, I mean, my issues with the new comics is not necessarily stemming from the lack of violence. So I yeah, imagine if they for do one of those artists coming back. <laughs> No, Milne is uh, a lot of the old uh, artists have, like have done more uh, comics. Like I mean, Milne Milne has done several pages on the new comic, um, and uh, several of the other ones have done uh, have done covers and whatnot uh, as well. So I mean, it's it's not something to where that you know, and, and Livio is is doing Galaxy, so I mean, it's not like they're not bringing back like the old the old artists. I don't necessarily know that they're going to bring back Roberts. I, I don't know, because I feel like, I, I feel like Roberts was a very, um, um, was divisive? divisive. Thank you. Uh, you know, divisive. person it, uh, as far as like with the fandom, like I think that there's a ton of people that absolutely loved him. And then there's a lot of people that are like, uh, I don't necessarily know if I want, you know, this is, this is the guy that brought us, you know, other Transformers relationships that uh, were not just the regular one. So I don't like this guy. It was the rise of Trump's America. It was inevitable. Yeah, that was kind of what I was getting at. Like, the the more liberal type of viewpoint. I mean, you can, you can definitely tell that Roberts is liberal. So I think that that's something to where a lot, you know, you, you don't want something that, like, you know, half the fandom's like, eh. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. I mean, all that stuff exists, and they're like, I don't want this in my comics. This is my escape. I'm like, this is just the way things are. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah. But that's always been the way. Like, that's the yeah, thing is, like, right. for people that are like, <laughs> like, they're like, I don't want my comics to be like that. And then it's like you bring back, a, you know, every storyline that a comic has ever done, and they're fighting against injustice and racism and all this type of thing, yeah. too. So. They just want their sugar, Lucas. Yep. Sugar in their tea. Uh, well, if uh, if you like TFLP, you like what we do, uh, consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash TFLP. Uh, tears from a dollar yep. on up. And uh, make sure to check out our other shows, uh, Microcasters, Tuesday nights at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central, Hatch My Wallet is uh, also at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central on Wednesday nights. Uh, cut the tapes on Friday, Saturday, just depending on when the episode goes up. 
and of course TFYLP. Uh, you know, this show is uh, typically live on YouTube, uh, unless we're not, uh, on Monday nights at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. So, And also check out our Facebook group uh, online. We have a TFYLP Facebook group. And uh, the tftalk.net page is where we post all of our news. So thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, thank you to Anna for bringing up the topic. I think it's a fun topic for uh, today. All right. Thanks all for right. talking about it with me. We'll catch you later. Cool. Bye. Bye.